Well, hello, good evening. Welcome everybody on this special edition webinar Q&A with the founder of Utopian Global, Bill Rao, and the founder of a store, um, Ryan Messer, who just sneaked out, but is coming back in a second. Um, I hope you all hear us loud and clearly. The connection is not the best. Um, as obviously it's just a time when everybody is now watching Netflix, it seems. Um, and since everybody is uh, uh, convicted at their homes, um, uh, well, of course, the broadband is not the best. Bill, how are you um, and where are you and are you safe? Hi, Claudia. I am well. I am safe. I am COVID-19 free. I'm very healthy and I'm in Dubai. Welcome to everyone joining this call. But it's great to hear. Uh, Ryan, uh, how are things in uh, the United States? Where well, I guess you are. Are you well? Are you safe? Um... Hi, Claudia. Yes, I'm all those things. Uh, it's a gorgeous day here. You wouldn't know that the world is in panic, but uh, no, all, all good, all healthy. Everyone's, uh, everyone's great on my end, including the family. So um, no, things are a little quiet now, but uh, but <laughs> there you go, Bill. <laughs> Stay safe. That's good. That's good. Well, it's uh, obviously not a joke. It's a serious thing which we're going through. And uh, who would have known uh, just a couple of weeks ago that it's going to be that um, uh, serious as it is, right? Uh, so it's certainly a serious um, market disruptions, as we would say it. It's certainly a big concern. It's a concern for the people. It's a concern for uh, all our Utopian Global and store fans. Um, so we have to, and that's why we really the decision to make this webinar to address all those concerns uh, with many of these people I have because pretty much everything has stopped uh, in the US I guess almost everything has stopped just our oil wells are still pumping huh? right right yeah um, sorry I had to unmute yeah nothing stops in the in the oil field so we're, we're considered uh, critical infrastructure of course so all of our trucks are still moving and we're still selling crude and all of our guys are out in the field pumping away and, and, and maintaining the operation. And so we're, we're, not, we're not skipping a beat over here. Um, so yeah, status quo. That's the great that, thing about our industry. Yeah, that, that's a good thing to hear. And I mean, it really needs slow maintenance uh, there. As of course it's pumps, uh, uh, it's basically 24 seven, right? The 24-7 20, operation, the oil doesn't stop flowing and we don't want it to. It's, um, and yeah. the thing we love about it, it's, it's making money while we're uh, sleeping in our comfortable beds. Yeah, uh, I, I also um, uh, here we have a little bit of a problem, I think, with the connection. I mean, it is slow, as I said, um, but hey, we've got to just basically be patient um, and hopefully a few people dropping off of their Netflix watching here in Europe where I'm streaming it from. Um, Bill, how are things in Dubai? Dubai has also slowed down. You are in the you are basically at the at the head of the precious metals uh, sort of business over there, meaning like Dubai is really the uh, the place. How are things going on the precious metals market? Well, first, I'd like to say that, you know, throughout my life, there's been certain events which have been game changers. And probably the first one was the death of JFK, John F. Kennedy. I was a young boy. I remember that that happened, even though I was probably, I was only very young, of course, but I, didn't fully understand it but i knew that something major on the planet had actually occurred and it changed destiny destiny in more recent times of course we had the 2008 crash we had 9 11 of course in 2001 these events were game changers to the way we live and i think this event that we're going through experiencing throughout the world right now is a massive massive game changer we're coming we're going to come back to a different world no question about that and hopefully politicians globally and uh Policies and things will change to suit that a biggest threat is not from the things we can see, it's from the things we can't see. So I'm hoping for that in one sense and that good, goodness comes actually from it. In respect to precious metals, yes, well, uh, as I put out on Facebook the other day, I'm the Swiss refinery because the Swiss refinery Argo Horias is based in Mendrisio in the Italian section of Switzerland, right on the Swiss-German border, sorry, the Swiss-Italian um, border. 
and most of their workers actually come from Italy, from one of the highly affected areas. So they they actually closed, they completely cl closed their refinery. And this this refinery, which is a London Bullion Market accredited refinery, in fact, there's only five in the world which are certified by the London Bullion Market Authority to actually certify other producers. They are one of those, and they shut down the plant completely. And they supply probably close to 30% of the world's uh, refined gold. So a significant player during these high uh, demand times of precious metals. So the supplies uh, are shut there in Switzerland. Uh, we still have inventory uh, available, but it's diminishing, of course, physical uh, inventory diminishing at Loomis, our storage facility. Uh, in Dubai, the refinery is still actually happening, but we don't use the Dubai refinery here because it's not an LBMA one, but there's still a, there is a refinery here and they're still producing with limited resources, but there's also a Loomis storage facility here that we have, uh, and that's still uh, functioning as well. But on the supply chain side of things, we see Federal Express, which we use to send out our, um, our precious metals. They, are, they have certainly uh, have been affected, no question about that. So at the moment, I recommend um, not to share, because you don't want to get gold and silver stuck in the supply chain somewhere. And I know that even Federal Express put out a notice to us that you know they're not going to accept personal signatures and of course if you're accepting something of high value you want to make sure that you're going to have a signature securing the delivery of that particular product so these are the issues that we actually face i met with um one of the major bullion bankers here actually yesterday we went, he couldn't come where i was but so we went for a walk uh, in a remote area and he was telling me that uh, there's no question about it supply is drying up uh, from parts of the world so prices where they are now they've come back um, and sorry, they bounced both ways. Actually, they pulled back significantly now that they've recovered quite a bit. Whether that recovery continues or whether because the liquidity is going to mean that there's no transaction is going to mean the price drops again, that's quite possible before we start to continue on maybe with this leg of, of the bull market. But um, to me, it's a buying opportunity. Uh, that's how I see it. And if you, you know, if you um, price average your buyings, you, no one ever gets the bottom, no one ever gets the top. So if you're smart, you actually just buy you know, a bit here, a bit there each month, and then you just price average it out over a period of time. I think that's a smart way and safe way of actually doing things. But in that sense, uh, Dubai has certainly slowed uh, right down. We just got a police notice today. And in fact, my phone, I thought, what's wrong with my phone? In fact, I was talking to you, Claudia, and you said, what's that noise uh, today? And what it was, it was a police warning. It here it is here. If we make the alert, let me see here. Oh, my phone was making this strange noise, like a, it had broken or something. It was an alarm going on the phone. It was actually a, from the Dubai police. So they, we have a, cur a curfew here from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m., uh, which doesn't interfere with me. But here it's relatively low cases anyway at this, at this stage, I believe. Uh, this pandemic has certainly affected many, many, many countries, and we're not out of it yet. So that's how I see it at this time. Yes, uh, I mean, that's a really, really uh, critical situation or uh, all, really all, all over the world. Anyhow, so let's move into different questions we do have and, of course, we get from our people. Um, and that is certainly, uh, obviously, we had a plan and that was to travel um, to some of the Latin, um, Latin American countries, especially Brazil and Argentina. This has been on put on hold. Uh, we couldn't go here, there. We couldn't go meet with the uh, government officials there. Uh, what, how far are we with, of course, um, uh, Polystream, the project, um, et cetera? Ryan, do you want to touch on that? Yeah, sure. Happy to talk about that. I mean, obviously, we've made a lot of steps. We, we're working on feasibility studies. We've got financial models. We've got full engineering design. We're building our teams um, of people now. We're going to be bringing on a, a chemical engineer on the advisory board uh, probably within the next couple of days um, who's got experience in, uh, in the building and design and engineering of uh, uh, plastics to fuel plants. Um, yeah, I mean, our big move, I think, our big shift in terms of direction has been focused now on uh, Latin America, South America, in terms of deploying our first plant. We really have looked hard at the economics and the markets and have determined that probably the United States right now is not going to be the best place to deploy. It's going to be better to deploy in areas where labor is uh, relatively cheap on a global basis and diesel as a byproduct or um, a product that we're going to be able to sell is more expensive than other markets. Of course, in the U.S., we have most of the refineries in the world, so we have 
a relatively low diesel price as compared to other places in the world. So I think there are more market opportunities given that our plant is really almost a distill, you know, as a refinery in itself and provides uh, to the market an extremely low sulfur diesel. Um, so we still have opportunities where we can deploy our expertise in the midstream space to, to increase margins by doing various blendings and reverse blending and other products to, uh, to increase margins and, and revenue for the company. So that's, that's been our major shift. And I guess if, if, if there's any news to come out of my comments here, it's that. Um, we're, we've shifted our focus down there. There's great opportunity um, in countries like, uh, as an example, Brazil, where they're doing, uh, making great strides in cleaning up a lot of the corruption with the new government and are issuing contracts and breaking up monopolies. So that opens up the door for other you know, companies like ourselves that have expertise in the space to come in and, and fill some of those contract opportunities um, in, a, in, a, in a market that, that meets all of our criteria. So that's, that's our, our main focus now. And, I was supposed to leave in about two days time, but um, they haven't canceled my flight yet, which I thought was interesting, but uh, I know we're gonna have to push it off a, a few weeks. So hopefully it's only a few weeks, but, uh, but that's the plan. And, and we're moving forward pretty quickly with that. Um, I know you've been getting a lot of queries about you know, how much are we impacted by COVID-19. Look, I don't think there's anybody on the planet uh, just about that's not impacted in some way because you know, we do have to rely on other companies. We rely on companies that are now, you know, not showing up to the office, they're working from home. So it has caused a little bit of disruption from our perspective, but, um, you know, in my mind, it's just, it's just a delay. I think, I think the markets will snap back. I think there's pent up demand. I think in a general sense, the markets were great before this. Um, so, you know, fundamentally, it's going to take some time to sort of reboot everything, but uh, we'll be back and going shortly for sure. And we're still focused on that goal. I mean, we've looked, we've got a great asset. It's, we haven't skipped a beat on its production, which we'll, I know we'll talk about in a second. Um, and so we've got that underpinning the value of the company. And if we've had any delays, it's pretty negligible um, in, in, the, in the sense of, of time. So we may, may have lost a month or so, but uh, we'll, we'll see. Yeah, uh, great. Uh, I mean, this is really also, one of the... Mm -hmm. Bill, go ahead, yeah. I was just going to add to what Ryan was saying, of course. What I, uh, he's absolutely correct. Look, looking at these uh, countries, more of the developing uh, countries, like Brazil, over 200 million people, I've, I've also been meeting last week and even this week with a very, very successful businessman who wants to take the same concept uh, to, he lives in North America, but his home country is North Africa or Middle East, Middle East, North Africa, without giving the country away. The same situation there. And, uh, and uh, he just loves the concept of being able to take uh, waste plastic, monetizing that waste plastic and converting it back to low sulfur diesel. Huge demand for it. But these things will take time. I mean, he's a businessman. He can make things move. He can connect us completely to, uh, to the government heads. Uh, he's at that level. But of course, uh, his question was, okay, the supply chain, how do we get the plastic to actually to the plant? The easiest part is building the plant. The technology's there, it's been done before. Uh, we can go and do that, but understanding the market, understanding where the supply chain is gonna actually fuel that particular, um, you know, 60 tons per day of plastic, how that's going to work, et cetera, has to be really well thought through and has to be, um, um, what's the word? A, um, and the evaluation done uh, in those each particular region. So while we're invited, people are knocking on, on, on Ryan's door directly, primarily, and saying, hey, we want to take Polystream to this particular location or this particular country. Population, uh, this city has a population of 11 million people, actually 15 million people, as an example. Um, you know, no question, waste plastic um, is the big thing, but being able to collect the waste plastic and get it to a, a, a specific site to process consistently 60 tons per day uh, is, is needs, a, needs a significant evaluation. So these things do take time in that respect, understanding what, first of all, what your market is, how to service the supply chain, building the actual polystyrene plant. I think you, you'd agree with me, Ryan, it's probably the most easiest thing because it's been done before. Yeah, it's been done before and the, uh, the uh, conglomerate of companies that we're going to be using and uh, at least what we've got in the design today, all out of the EU, have already been putting plants together for 25 years. So this is a design that's been refined over those 
two and a half decades of doing this exact thing. So this is not something new. I will say that, yes, the, the, the plant design is relatively easy, but it, the, the, a lot of times I get this question. I get, well, well, how much money does it make? Well, and I say, okay, well, you know, there are a ton of questions that, that go into deriving that answer. It's not as simple as here's a machine, you plant it on the ground, you put power up to it and off you go. As you point out, you've got a whole supply chain issue on the front end and the back end of, okay, well, what's the market? What's the supply? Can we blend? Um, what are the regulations in that market? How, how do we have to, how far do we have to ship it? Where do we get our bulk material from? What kind of bulk material? Do we have to process it? Is it dry? Is it this? I mean, so, you know, we're building a race car and, um, you know, I need to know what kind of track it's going to, I need to know what kind of track it's going on. I need to understand, uh, does it need to corner well? Does it need to have, you know, all those little things that, that tweak the design um, to ultimately allow us to build the right kind of plant for the environment that it's going in will we'll determine the answer. So really what we do is a mini feasibility study for every site. So we'll go in, if we see the right market fundamentals like in Brazil, and we'll go there, put our feet on the ground and go meet with the markets, go understand what the logistics of the supply chain look like. So we can begin to build that model to, 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 to give the, you know, to give the answer that we're looking for in terms of, you know, how much money or does this particular um, plant at this location, will it make money for us? Uh, but in, in a general sense, yes. And so that's why we're focused on areas like South America. So I think the, the best opportunities in those markets. Uh, thanks, uh, Ryan. That's great. And actually, I just got, uh, while you're speaking, we're getting a lot of uh, requests. I just got one I have to send to you from Paraguay as well, uh, which uh, is also Latin America. Um, and also for the people on the call here, if you do have uh, somebody, obviously, who is um, looking to actually take it themselves on, um, here's some connection whatsoever. We always, Ryan has uh, a, a letter uh, prepared, which uh, has more detailed information as to what it is required in order to build these plants in the different places. But let's move on. One of the most, uh, of course, asked questions, and I have here my phone here so that I'm looking, of course. Um, so on Raccoon Band, obviously, um, right now the asset which we do have, which is producing cash flow, is Raccoon Band, as we all understand. Um, so uh, basically, um, how has it been affected from uh, the oil, the oil price, um, and obviously, when are some cash payments? Or how are we in the planning of those cash payments to come out? Yeah. So the first part of the question is that we've been affected by what's going on, um, not by COVID nineteen per se. Well, I suppose indirectly, the oil markets have been affected by COVID nineteen because, you know, obviously with you know transportation cut way back. Um, Flights, you know, that impacts the demand on refined products, which impacts the demand on crude. Um, as I pointed out many times, and I think just about on every call we've done, you know, we put hedges in place. So we have uh, contracts with uh, British Petroleum. So we've hedged our oil price. And so our, our floor right now is, is $50. So we've got about half our production pledged at, at 50 bucks through July. So past July, um, we've got exposure, but we have time, plenty of time to put on more hedges uh, between now and then. And of course, you know, the market has to come back because, um, you know, Saudi Arabia, for that matter, Russia, and, and all the major players that have caused the other issue, which has intersected, ironically, at the same time as COVID-19, no one can hack these, these low prices for very much longer. So, um, so we are currently protected. I, uh, one of the questions was around the financials, and I, I think we're going to show that here in a second. Um, but the second part of the question was, remind me, please. Uh, it was on the cash payments, uh, which uh, uh, yeah. So yeah, so we're still we're still targeting for July. There's a possibility that we could do something earlier than that, but uh, we're still exploring those ideas. But right now, the target's still July. Thanks. So let's move on to the financials. That was another question, actually, and that is let's me let me read it out here. So what are actually what is Raccoon Band basically turning over uh, currently? Yeah. So um, we make on about an annual basis around six hundred thousand uh, dollars net, or is that as we did in twenty nineteen uh, six hundred and sixty two thousand dollars for the year. Um, 
is it okay that, that that's good so you can see there's two uh, two sections here so the rows at the top as we call that the top section that's all 2018 those are fiscal year um, 2018 and calendar year for that matter um, from January through to December if you could scroll to the right you'll see that in 2018 net to the 12 percent in the field scroll just a little yeah the field made seven hundred and twenty five thousand dollars okay um so and then this year it made about six hundred and sixty two thousand dollars in 2019 so that's these bottom rows here we break it down in revenue we subtract operating expenses um we come up with income um and then you have total capital costs what are capital costs capital costs are things where we spend money in the field to develop or improve production working over a well putting rods tubings pumps drilling um, things like that so that's capital cost so i include that in the number so you can see what the net net cash flow is that's us taking revenue and investing it back in the field um, and then you have a net income or in, if it's in parentheses a loss for that month um, after capital expenditure and tax so that bottom line is uh, what we receive on a monthly basis and then of course we got it tallied up year to date so 2019 was six hundred sixty two thousand dollars which is again roughly that that 20 percent so why the difference between 2018 and 2019 if you look at 2018 oil prices were a little bit higher so th these are unhedged uh numbers in here these are directly from the field and from the operators this does not include our hedges in here and that uh, is the whole field that's the whole field correct this, well this is just to the net to the 12 percent so this okay. has been knitted down so if you want to see what the whole field makes you can roughly multiply this number times eight I understand um, mm -hmm. and to, to get the to get the total um if you look and so i put the price of oil per month so you can see how it impacts revenue as you can see in, uh, let's just use July of 2018, the price of oil was $77 a barrel. We received $214,000 in revenue that month. Uh, for the same month, a year later, we received 121,000 revenue. Now, some of that could be a little bit of the production coming off because they did do a little bit more development in 2018. 2019, there wasn't as much development, if you all remember, because we were making the acquisition, which took us from January all the way to August to get this deal closed. So there wasn't much development. And you can see that in the capital expenditure line, capital costs, January, February, all the way through July. And then in August, we spent $114,000 to drill a couple of wells that we drilled. So. Um, all that ties, I think, to the history and what we've given everybody in terms of updates. Um, and so there you go. There you have it. Those are the numbers from a field level um, and directly into the subsidiary that is owned by store. So I have uh, to take questions on those as they come in. Yeah, I mean, that, that's fantastic because those are the uh, questions people always ask. Now, uh, you, uh, do you want to explain a little bit, because this is also one of the questions, because sometimes it gets confusing. Obviously, when you buy uh, in uh, Utopian Global, you buy a package, you must understand that a part of it goes into commission, uh, part of it goes into, of course, Utopian Global, while well, big part goes to commission uh, in the smaller packages, obviously. Um, uh, so not everybody not all the money actually goes to store, uh, which is uh, quite clear. Maybe Bill or, or Ryan, you want to do a comment on that as well, that they understand. Yeah, I'll let Bill cover that, he's great at that detail. Okay, well, it's a great question and, and people should actually understand this if they read the white paper and uh, also been on our calls, we speak about this often. Obviously, if you're buying something and we're paying out commissions, um, how can people expect a return on something that's paying out commissions that's not generating revenue is it i mean you're buying you're buying you're buying a package to give you an idea on the smaller packages which are really designed for the leveraged income earners the affiliate marketers in one sense packages from 99 euros the small ones up to three up primarily to 1500 euros three and a half thousand euro packages 40 percent generally 40 percent of those revenues goes to the asset is allocated to store in the, in the actual investment asset. So your investment should be based on that, on that 40%. 10% goes to, to the company on the higher packages is much less than that. And then of course, 
uh, 50 percent gets paid out into commissions to our affiliates now when you jump to the quantum packages that ratio significantly changes from uh, 40 percent going to store it goes from 85 percent to about 98 percent that goes to store so nearly all the money is allocated to store and the commissions are greatly reduced for the for the quantum packages but when you look at how um you know what's your return on investment initially you've got to look at okay you've got to understand what you're buying and for the higher investors of course they're getting a lot more store they're getting a lot more equity in the shares because they're putting a lot more money into it that's just the way things work in business and for the smaller packages uh of course you just base it on on the value of your actual shares but again this is why we teach people who choose to be affiliates enroll three people and the asset uh, the asset is actually Actually free it doesn't owe you anything I mean you th therefore it's very easy to calculate uh, of course you've got your money back very easy to calculate your return on investment then because it doesn't owe you anything correct that's why we try and teach people especially on the smaller packages you know we have a great we have a great asset here we have a great team here if you have colleagues or friends I mean for 99 euros to three and a half thousand euros that own real assets it's going to pay out a, a distribution of building the polystream plant it's really a low risk investment all three other people into it it owes you nothing there's zero risk so invest everything that you that you earn over and above that is a gain it's a plus that's very 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 exciting so that's that's primarily the concept claudia okay great uh well fa thank you reason, so much one last thing on this just one last thing on this let's come back to the purpose this is why it's a real pleasure to work with ryan I mean, Ryan, he's involved with big business of real assets, oil and gas, natural resources, et cetera, and now polystream, midstream, et cetera, and upstream. Um, but to be able to do a, a joint venture between us and Utopian Global to make these products, for example, Raccoon Bend would never have come to the table to, to ordinary people. These assets come to the marketplace and are absorbed instantly by the insiders, engineers, geologists, people who are in the natural resource sector. Same as in, I was in the hotel sector for 20 years, owning four hotels. When good hotels came up into the market, good buyers, they didn't even hit the public market. We got the information first and we would buy them if they, if they were good. This is what happens in the natural resource sector. So the whole idea of the partnership, because of my relationship with Ryan, which goes back to 2003, 2004, when I invested heavily uh, in an energy fund, is that let's make these hard assets available to all people, not just the people who are in the club. That is the purpose of Utopian Global, and that's the purpose of these of these smaller packages. So we're absolutely blessed to be able to do this. Now, what we're building with Polystream is a massive project. Okay, it's a it's a very very exciting project, and building big projects like this takes time. Especially, we've we've chosen to build it through using our network of people, people who are you know buying 99 euro package, people who are buying a 50,000 euro package. It takes time to build this up. But we want to give ownership of real assets to to ordinary people, not just the one percent or five percent, if you say. This is really the whole purpose of Utopian Global. It's always been our purpose, making gold and silver assets available to ordinary people. What we're doing now is taking natural resources and the high end high end um, uh, projects such as Polystream available to ordinary people, rather than just high end investors and banks. That's really what we're doing. Absolutely, and uh, of course, uh, again, we have also the other pr projects which are uh, still in place there in Ecuador and Peru, um, which are not on the back burner or anything like that. Uh, so it's still there. Uh, it's just that all the focus right now actually goes into, of course, uh, Polystream um, and uh, so on. So basically, um, a lot of the questions are also coming uh, on terms of those uh, cash payments, uh, which is still the target is for July. Um, so basically, um, what's your outlook? Will it be? Um, do you have any idea yet if uh, there will be things reinvested? Will it be all paid out? Um, uh, will it be a uh, quarter? Um, so are there plans in place already? Uh, I would say right now it's too, it's too early. I mean, we still have to have a lot of those discussions. Um, so okay. yeah, we need we need to meet. When you see the numbers, when you did. We need to work through all this before we start giving out answers because i don't want to set a precedent on this call by making a statement and then come back and then have to pull back from it later because it you know we thought through it and there were other reasons why we would change it so 
Yeah, totally makes sense. No, no, that that's great. Um, so another questions. Um, uh, I'm I'm almost I'm actually through all the questions which the people have here. I have, I had them all on my uh, phone. But yeah, so basically those are the main concerns. Um, and now uh, will COVID nine uh, delay us going to stock market? And how much? Um, uh, so basically, or how how when do you think? Uh, or does it have to do even with it to go to the stock market, basically? No, I mean, look, directly it doesn't affect us, but um, if it slows down our ability to be able to raise the capital we need to execute on our project, then then I guess it does affect us, just like any other sort of natural disaster can affect you. Um, I I mean, I don't, I don't think anyone's of the opinion that we're gonna completely eliminate COVID-19, right? Well, all we're doing is trying to slow down the um, the uh, the infection rate to allow for the hospitals to be able to, to handle the amount of people that need help. Um, so it's not going away. I think, you know, we would be crazy just like the flu to think that we're not going to be exposed to it at some point. So, um, you know, uh, I think the reaction by all the, the governments and local jurisdictions are probably warranted. Um, but at some point, we're going to become numb to all this, and it's going to slowly dissipate to the point at which the flu has. I mean, everybody knows more people die from the flu than this, but um, this being so new and how it's contracted and, um, and the incubation period makes it a different challenge. So um, yes, I think it indirectly affects us, but I, I don't see it really pushing out our timeline significantly right now. And I think as long as people continue to be active and can participate and help us, you know, make or give this project awareness so we can raise the capital we need, it's not going to have an impact that would be meaningful at all. So uh, obviously the outlook from like both. Something else from that answer, that. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. You know, the timing of the timing of um, listing on a stock exchange or a crypto exchange is primarily going to be a stock exchange. Uh, I would believe, and Ryan would, Ryan's spoken about this many, many times, we shouldn't be rushing to get this on the stock exchange. That That's not the priority right now, to be quite honest. The priority right now is to, is to build the operation, add value to the company, build revenues, add asset value. And depending on the economic situation at that, that time, what's going on in the world, and okay, we've got COVID-19, we're probably gonna have COVID-33 or something next year, or the year after, who knows? There's always gonna be some type of storm popping up especially in the global market that we're living in right now. It's fragile economically and geopolitically. Anything could happen in one respect. And so you could have an asset, and Ryan knows this. Ryan has taken, I was involved, when I say I was involved, I was an investor. He was the guy doing it. He was, he was the CEO of a public company. He's taken a private listing company. He's taken it public. Now, you can have a great company that has great asset value, has great revenues. You listed at the wrong time, and you sabotage the whole deal. It just doesn't work out, you know? So this is a very thing. I don't know everyone's thinking, oh, let's get this listed. We want to get we want to get our return. We want to sell our tokens. Well, this is a longer term asset by this. There's no question about that. And most of the, actually most of the people, the large investors, which I am one of them, we understand the game plan and we understand that what the important key factors actually are. And being able to sell my to my investment and do a multiply on it, I know it's going to take a bit of time. And the whole value and energy right now has to be in one, raising capital, working with great partners, including governments, to build it, to build this asset. When this the monetary side of thing will take care of itself. You know, we build something right, we build something great here. This the money is always a secondary effect. But we have to build something great with great value first with a great team. And that's what we're doing. When that's completed, we're just at the right time, we'll all do very well. And generally, as Ryan will probably agree with me, if we're patient and we list at the right time and we achieve these things, even if we, even if it's taken a year later, even if it's taken two years longer than we anticipated, if we do it right, generally the return is magnified that much. It was all worth the waiting time, to be quite honest. But if we're impatient, we rush things and we're emotional about it and we want to list this because we own 100 euros of tokens and we want to be able to get it listed on the exchange so I can tell it, sell the 100 euros of tokens and, and make so much, we're going to sabotage it. I mean, I've been very direct up front from the very beginning of this concept. 
how we want to do this. And this is a long-term raccoon bear meat purchase because it generates revenues now. Absolutely fantastic, low risk asset. I mean, Ryan's found a jewel there. And now, of course, building the polystring one, it's a fantastic concept. To me, it's not, it's not gonna be listed in 2020. Look what's happening in the world now. We're already heading into April, you know? So if it's gonna be listed, things can change very quick though. With that said, we can have a government say, come to us in the next two or three months and say, we wanna sign the contract, we want this to move ahead. And things, things can actually move and turn around very, very, very fast. That, that is true. But where we're looking at things right now, I think, you know, it's really gonna be 2021. Um, before that actually happens on a listing minimum. And the whole focus now is about uh, is doing the market research and building the actual asset and, and get it into production. That's really what the focus has to be on. Uh, absolutely. And I mean, the great thing is, uh, and it's what we always have been saying is, look, if you market uh, the product um, uh, we, which we have, um, you know, you're going to make cash right now. Uh, so uh, why would you not market uh, this great, amazing concept uh, and actually making money right now. I mean, this is basically a no-brainer. Everybody is at home. Uh, we cannot go out. It doesn't matter. We are all equal. If you're in the United States, in Dubai, for the first time, we are all equal. South Africa locked down today. Uh, we have plenty of people on the call from South Africa, Argentina, Brazil. Everybody's on lockdown. Everybody is at home. Everybody needs to do something. Many people got rid of their jobs. Um, they, um, there's more businesses closing. If you could just mute yourself because it's, um, guys, um, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to you when you got a second too. Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, so uh, look, look what really um, it's happening. So I mean, this is an amazing opportunity uh, as well for you to share it. We have been really now um, uh, on basically doing presentations uh, in the morning every day. It is morning. Tony Tran from um, uh, Australia did host the uh, Australian and uh, New Zealand uh, Asian region. Uh, presentation every morning we do that my time 9 a.m. no sorry 10 a.m. I think it's something like 7 o'clock like Brisbane time I think 10 o'clock Auckland time and um, every morning uh, spreading the message uh, we have uh, I believe um, different people in different places uh, they've really gone full out zoom for the African regions for uh, the UK regions we have Latin America and I'm be on the next uh, few three hours on calls there. Uh, all those regions they pull together. Okay, let's. Uh, they are not typical regions for do it online. Um, they're really more so offline person. But they all came together um, and actually basically now uh, being online and, uh, and 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 really doing a lot of Zoom calls and presentations online to spread the message because they love this project and they love of course to uh, share the project but also it gives them it gives them cash flow right now right now uh, while of course investing in long term and doing actually something for the environment i know we have uh, great people there was also in the uk doing fantastic st stuff there um really really great you guys um uh, of course um uh, that's fantastic in norway all all over all over the world really we have uh, people now who are typically offline people um, now coming online and well we all have to change we have all have to change the way we did business before i'm also an offline person well i also had to come online to do more that's just the way it is so nothing stops us from doing our project no we are not slowing down there's maybe things slowing down but of course and the production of course in the raccoon band and so on this is still going on and everything is going ahead so basically i guys i have no more questions coming here um uh, as uh, jason said very well rome wasn't built in one day and the patience is virtue absolutely that is the case um so it is it is what it is isn't it? We have to... yes Yes, we have people all over the world who've been involved with us for many years. This is the 12th year that um, that we've been running this particular company. And I want to tell just a brief story how I got involved with multi-level marketing or leveraged income. I mean, right now, we just saw the, in the United States that I think we now have 3.7 million people have applied in the last days for unemployment benefits because obviously this particular crisis, the closure of businesses and different things, we see this happening all around the world. There's people suffering right now. What can really help people right now is an extra 300, 500,000 euros per week or per month, whatever. They need cash flow, correct? 
I mean, here in the Emirates, if you're not worth them, you don't get paid. Simple as that. They don't have the they don't, don't have the luxury of the West, and many countries around the world are actually like that. But I'm going to touch a brief story how I got involved in this particular industry, and it was actually in 1991. I was in Melbourne, Australia. I was in my second hotel that I owned, and interest rates were 21 and a half percent. It was a crisis, no question about that. And I was on the razor's edge of going under. I was burdened with debt. So when you're paying 21 and a half percent on on debt. Uh, any profit that you're making is primarily going to service the debt. I was living on the razor's edge. And a, a businessman came in and said, Mr. Bill, I would like to share a business concept with you. And he, and he actually introduced me to the world of leveraged income, being able to compound your time. Comp and while I didn't like the company that I was actually with, I just I grasped instantly the concept of actually how to compound your wealth, compound your income. I just fell in love with the concept. I thought this was ingenious. Now, this particular company, actually it was many months later, I got engaged with that particular company. And the requirement was that you had to buy 150 Australians worth of nutritional product per month. And then if you shared it with other people, they bought their consumable products as well. You weren't a, you weren't a commission. And to me, I thought, this is an absolutely no-brainer. I mean, I, I buy these products anyway, so why not convert my spend? I'm going to buy this, of course. And I did that. And over a period of time, in fact, I went to I went to London, met the owners of the particular company, got the rights to take it to Germany. And in the end, uh, as you know, Claudia, because you worked in customer support for this particular company, uh, I ended up earning a you know a strong six-figure income passively from this particular network to leverage income. So here I am running my hotels in Australia and then quietly and passively I'm earning a six figure income generated in some other part of the world where, where we built uh, a team of over 50, 53,000 uh, people. Significant game changer to me. We ended up buying, from going from being on the razor's edge, going to actually uh, buying hotel freeholds, uh, et cetera. And the point I'm making here is, here, you don't have to buy nutritional products, which is nothing wrong with that. I still buy nutritional products today. You don't have to spend $150 per month. We're talking 50 euros per month. You're getting ownership of real assets, which is going to produce another secondary income for you. You build a network, work with five or six people, work and train them, duplicate with that. And over time, you will generate many, many thousands of uh, euros in commissions per month. It is a powerful program that we actually have. And quite often, even today, when I go back to Australia and, and even when I travel uh, into Germany, I'm, I bump into people who haven't seen for some time, they'll ask me, are you still doing that thing? Thing meaning, are you still doing, sarcastically, are you still doing that network marketing company or are you still doing that leveraged income co concept? And I'll say, yes, I'm still doing that thing. I love to do that thing because it was a game changer for me. It, this is a business that is available for all people. I was a business person running my hotels, and here I am buying my nutritional products each month, sharing it with my friends and family, buying it as well. And I ended up building a huge network of over 50,000 members, and of course, earning a six figure income quietly. Here we have a concept again 50 euros a month, less than $2 per day. You get ownership of assets, and you have a powerful, powerful cash flow. Um, system platform at your fingertips, which which gives you ownership of real assets, which are going to generate another secondary income for you. It's a no-brainer. To me, it's a no-brainer. Introduce it to three people, you have your money back, zero risk. Build a team of eight people anywhere in your first two levels, you're cash flow positive. You're getting your assets for free. Assets every month, building your cash flow, a no-brainer. But people look at these things, they they get into analysis paralysis. I mean, the risk is really so minimal. And most people spend $2 on BS every day and they blow it. And here they are, they've got assets, they've got, a, they've got a company that's been around for 12 years, have ownership of real assets, managed by a great team with Ryan and his team, and they can't make a decision. No wonder they're stuck in life. No wonder they have only maybe one paycheck away from being broke. Because most people in this situation right now are two or three paychecks away from being broke. They've got mortgages to pay, they've got rents to pay, house uh, car leases to pay, they've got no cash flow coming in. This is the saviour. People need what we've got right now. And I tell you right now, it works.
but you've got to, you've got to learn the craft you've got to learn what we have here get the understanding learn how to present it most importantly you have a real team and a real company and it pays out it's fantastic and it's low risk there's no need for anyone to get themselves over the head with what we're doing you can get started for 99 euros less than two dollars a day for the asset accumulation each month a copy today cost me three dollars four dollars and here you are getting ownership of assets and an international global business if you grasp the power you understand the power of numbers you understand the powers of how to leverage your income you'll never ever go back another way this businessman that worked in walked into my hotel in melbourne in 1991 it was a blessing to me he changed my life he changed my understanding because i realized if i'm just trading my time for money i'll do that till the day i die and i'm pretty much going to retire broke okay also I had businesses, I may, wouldn't have retired. Maybe I would have retired broke because I was on the razor's edge then. But the point is most people who are just trading the time for an income, they'll work their 40 or 50 years of their life and the, and the chances are they're gonna retire broke. This is your way to change your life. No question about that. So I just wanted to share that story of how I got introduced into this leveraged income business back in 1991. And as you know, Claudia, I met you years later, you were, the, you were at the head of the customer service of the company that we took to Germany, uh, the products. I certainly was, I can verify. No fake news, um, uh, I can verify. <laughs> <laughs> Good. All right. Well, so um, let's uh, wrap this up here. Thank you again, uh, everybody, uh, for uh, being on the call. Uh, we do understand the concerns. We do understand, of course, the challenging times. Uh, we um, really uh, hope that you all stay safe. You all put your mask on when you go out um, and uh, that you are careful. You wash your hands and you do all this stuff, which you anyway should do. So many people didn't do it before. Um, uh, so unfortunately, that's the case so it's another learning lesson that we have to be more aware of germs and stuff like that so we hope that you all stay safe uh, we certainly going to take after uh, look after us all of us individually uh, being uh, here condemned at our homes it's a good time to start uh, cooking healthy uh, if you haven't uh, uh, eaten healthy before if you have been out there all the time and eating fast food well now it's the time to actually really look after your body look after your soul look after your mind uh, don't don't watch too much news because this doesn't help you either. Do something productive, learn something new, a new skill, study, um, share the message, share, learn how to share the message. Um, that's what I would like to give you on the way. And again, like, a lot of things coming out from uh, Utopian Global side in terms of making your business all the time easier, uh, in terms of funnel systems and so on. Um, we have translated more languages if you have ever checked the language tab. Um, and as I said, like every day, literally, uh, there are leaders from all around the world hosting now Zoom calls, hosting webinars, uh, hosting all kinds of stuff uh, online so to share the message of Utopian Global. So thank you, Ryan. Stay please safe. Um, I know you live in a beautiful spot um, and you have a plenty of fresh air and you're not living in a city, so you're really, really lucky, <laughs> aren't you? Yeah, it's nice. Uh, yeah, we don't have many neighbors and a lot of trees and, uh, and lakes. So, no, good spot. And we, we will stay safe. You do the same. You too, Bill. And uh, we'll chat soon. Thanks for having me on. It's always a pleasure. Yes, absolutely. Bill, stay safe as well in Dubai. Um, have a great time. We don't know when we all see each other again. Um, so it looks like a few months, uh, uh, it's not going to happen. But uh, all everybody on the call, please stay safe. And we're going to pull through that all together. Let's share the message and keep the vision high. Very important. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Claudia. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, everyone. All the best to you. Stay safe. Thank you.